Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating Leela chess game to show you today. This is against Boot in the TSEC Cup round 16. So it's a 30 minute with a 5 second increment time control. E4 from Leela. Boot playing black plays the Coracon. We have actually the opening book given is the Coracon exchange variation. Bishop d3 here, knight f3. Uh, after bishop g4, this is the end of the book given to both. c3, knight c6, h3, bishop h5. This preserves the bishop and can safeguard the king side. This bishop could be dangerous on that diagonal. So it looks as though black has solved uh, at least the king's safety issues out of the opening. And this bishop is outside of the pawn chain quite nicely. It's not blocked in or anything, so no bad piece. King safety seems okay. Uh, we have knight bd2, bishop d6. This does encourage uh, a dark square campaign, giving up, uh, or rather swapping off the dark square bishops. Can white actually make use of this seemingly almost insignificant consideration that the dark square control might be stronger than black's corresponding light square control? Because white in this position has this guardian bishop on d3 and the guardian dark square bishop has left the building here so uh let's see both sides castle rook e1 knight e7 a4 queen c7 i thought perhaps a5 and i've checked this it seems as though okay it gives up the b5 square so it's not the engines any engines like stockfish first first choice to do this but uh if we look it seems as though white shouldn't be able to build up the position that much. It should be about equal here. So in the game, interestingly though, Queen C7 was played, which allows A5, and you can start to see that White is really probing and locking down, trying to lock down the pawns and probing the dark squares. Rook A B8, Queen A4, Bishop G6, Bishop B5. So again, rejecting this strategic kind of exchange. And actually prompting black to have the pawns fixed. So now we have b6 kind of marked down as well as c5 as well as e5. The bishop drops back all the way back to f1. Knight c6 and now b4. This does provide a target potentially the c3 pawn but how exploitable is this? Black could consider eventually maybe trying to use one of the knights to target c3. Uh, for example, maybe later from b5, if a knight can be manoeuvred there. But uh, white, on the other hand, is would white be worried? This dark square control, this grip, could it be emphasized to actually do something on top of that? An application like attacking the king, perhaps, later. We see rook a c8, rook b c8, queen a2, h6, queen b2. Some subtle manoeuvring here, knight d7. Knight b3, and the rook goes back. Seems a bit of waiting moves. Uh, threatening to damage the pawns. Leela gets out of this possibility, keeping the pawn structure intact. And yeah, black's got very good control over that e5 square here. Where can this knight possibly go to? In fact, we see a very nice positional plan now. Watch this knight. Knight g4. Knight goes to e3 to start off with then to d1 and uh, this reminds me of a classic maneuver you get in the dutch stonewall sometimes the knight is going like this to, to have contact strategically with these dark squares impressive positional play it seems at the moment <clears throat> knight b2 queen e3 queen f3 queen f4 just looking at the dark squares maybe wanting an exchange of queens if the queen went back to c7 now. So is black in a way getting more restricted here? Bishop e4, h4. The pawns are actually constrained, h5 now. So not just constraining g5 as h4 did, but also even g6 now. White's well, going to have something to say about g6. So these pawns on both sides of the board are kind of being fixed in a way. They're kind of being frozen. Black strategic pawn break potential has been minimized knight f5 or even just moving any pawns now knight d3 and white's knights seem to have nice strategic contact 
with these dark squares. And in fact, white swaps off the c5 defensive knight, leaving black after knight d6 uh, with the possibility of a more materialistic hungry knight going to b5 to hit the c3 pawn. Lula takes on d7 and plays knight c5. Queen c6, bishop e2, bishop f5, bishop d1. So where is this bishop going? Rook a1, bishop e4, f3. f3, very interesting move. It looks as though white, by contrast to black, does have a strategic pawn break now in mind with potentially g4 and g5. How would one make this more effective to open up that g-file? In fact, you could consider a move like rook a2 to g2 later. So actually, white has some potential here to build up quite a dangerous looking attack. We do have bishop h7 and now rook a2. So a subtle little implication of this strategic pawn break uh, is being made here with rook a2 as if the rook could swing to g2 later. We see queen c7, g4 is played, king h8, bishop a4, rook f8. Here, just to show some of the dangers of the position concretely, if knight e8, white could take on c7 and maybe just go to this end game to be better. Doesn't actually matter anymore about this king side attack. This end game, there's another strategic break on this side. Forget g5, there's b5 in this end game. For example, this position would leave black uh, strategically busted basically because b7 is such a beautiful fixed target and the knight can be taken uh, taking here to protect a5 just with a winning position basically. So the end game tr uh, transitions are not very favorable for black. We see rook f8 and the attack starts to mount up now more pressure g5 break looks more dangerous queen e7 bishop b3 with a concrete threat of bishop takes d5 here because of that pins pawn on e6 we see queen e8 uh now king f2 so making potential g5 break even more effective if both rooks are behind it rook g8 Queen e5 again making g5 even more effective. If g5 g takes and this pawn is pinned, that's even worse for black. So a nice pin on g7. Check. Nuisance check on h4. Uh, for the moment, uh, black rejected that invitation for the queen exchange, but now is carrying on with the nuisance check here. Leela actually puts the king now over on the queen side, protecting c3 away from the checks. So white does seem ready to roll here. The c file doesn't seem at all a big issue with that blockading knight on c5. And white is still ready, it seems, to play for g5 at some point at leisure. Uh, we see queen f6. Now f4, so not bothering with the exchange of queens, f4, bishop e4. If black had taken on e5, it seems very attractive for white, m maybe to consider f takes and just build up on the f file. So anyway, uh, we see bishop e4, rook h2. If uh, knight takes e4, this would liberate black's position somewhat after rook e3, because c3 would have to be defended. It's not worth the hassle, this position, it's, it's about equal. So uh, rook h2, queen d8. Now g5 finally, rook e8. So in this position, guess what Leela plays if I give you five seconds to pause the video? What would you play here? Okay, you can either gain 500 points or lose 500 points at this critical moment. Now, if you indicated g takes, you lose 500 points because your queen is now trapped. f6 and the queen is trapped in, in the middle of the board. After h takes, uh, g7, rook takes, 
uh, this position is terrible losing the Queen no in fact the leader plays an exchange sack Rook takes e4 much stronger now f6 is played here just to consider d takes for a moment g takes now is very strong for example this position there's ample compensation for the exchange these pawns are going to be pretty mobile soon massive pawns in the center with a big advantage to white uh so f6 was played on uh if we just have a look at the moment on g takes here rook g8 is an alternative again it doesn't really bear thinking about that doesn't bear thinking about and if uh, King h7 then in fact here white has a knight takes e6 this is really strong very strong attack here it's uh, winning for white it's a, it's a massive attack so um, I mean there's things like h7 on rook h8 and, and queen j8 as the example huge threats emerging or simpler uh, with Queen f5 and the rook coming into the center it doesn't bear thinking about so f6 was played not accepting the exchange sack we have knight takes e6 f takes knight takes d8 d takes knight f7 check rook takes rook takes uh, bishop takes so pretty forcing transition to an end game g6 this seals black's king now black's king is kind of paralyzed in the corner we see e takes f4 on e takes d4 c takes this position is quite nice for white white's doing well there uh, so e takes f4 was played bishop d5 e3 check and now very clever move king e1 and the pawn has immunity here black plays rook d7 if knight takes c3 then rook c2 and black has back row issues so for example here it's going to be a back row mate and you might think well hold on a sec what about uh, rook c7 well it just plays bishop e4 actually and then d5 is crushing with d6 yeah black's responsibility of holding this knight is too much in conjunction with that past d pawn so uh king e1 rook d7 Bishop f3 blockading and again you know diplomatic immunity for that pawn knight takes says rook c2 so rook d6 rook c2 rook d7 king e2 king g8 king comes to d3 so white's king is qualitatively better but black king is trying to come to the center rook h2 which gives the idea that black is actually now that the king's protecting c3 black seems to be overloaded because two points of contact b7 and f4 means that how is black avoiding material loss here we see rook d7 just giving up b7 now that's taken uh, and now rook h4 so going after this one as well blockading king e6 but now after c4 these pawns are rolling b5 this creates two connected pass pawns in the center and a fantastic bishop looking at a8 the a pawn looks devastating here in conjunction with that bishop so a6 knight c7 a7 and this is becoming easy looking in fact it's end of game really black's pawns are not really going anywhere that they have no chance to go anywhere white's just hold piece up and it's going to be adjudicated pretty soon let's have a look here uh, this was 1-0 here black resigned so interesting use of the Conrad Khan exchange variation here from Leela the dark square campaign on the Queen's side was impressive I thought fixing down the pawns on the King side actually meant that white was the one with strategic pawn breaks and in fact not just g5 but b5 in some of the variations so both b5 and g5 on both sides of the board uh, strategic break luxury for Leela and pawns paralyzed for the opponent and it, this made especially g5 the whole king side attack led to a forceful transition into a terribly bad end game for black 
uh, which Lila was able to convert because there were targets on b7 and f4. Terrible endgame scenario, transition. So, yeah, fantastic instructive positional chess here. If you enjoyed this game uh, as much as me, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly. Become a member at chessworld.net, which is my chess server. Play against, play against other YouTubers. You can also test yourself on variations covered in this game and other game videos from the improved menu, puzzle books option, which has a link to the annotated game. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Let's have a look at the puzzle book for this amazing game now. If you go to chessbowl.net puzzle books, you'll see uh, this game has been added now. We can click start puzzles and we'll get a few from the game we've covered. So white to play here for a clear advantage. If you remember this position, I hope you do. Five seconds. White to play. In this variation, black had to address the concrete uh, bishop takes d5. So this didn't happen in the game. Black had to parry that in advance. Let's go to the next one. Black to play for a clear advantage here. If white had taken on h6, there's a disastrous trap of the queen f6. And that actually means that the rook can take here. So, and then accurate is checking here and then taking the queen. So that was. Uh, one variation. White to play for a clear advantage here. I think white just takes here. And h6. Using that pin. In this variation, there was a powerful idea. Uh, was it knight takes e6? And bishop takes? No, actually check first. Check here. And yeah, queen takes here, I think is devastating. A couple more here with the king restricted there in that form pawn. There was rook c2 here. And then we have a back row mate in this variation. And here, I think white just plays bishop f. Bishop e4 actually might be uh, the move most accurate. And with the idea of playing d5 and then d6 is crushing that pass pawn, the overload of black's rook and having to deal with the pawn. Okay, so hope you enjoyed these little puzzles. You can uh, play your own filters and check out all the many uh, puzzle books emerging at Chess World recently, especially the famous players I'm going to be adding to pretty soon, even more famous players. Uh, there's a lot to choose from, from great finishes. Uh, so I hope you can check that out as well. Thanks very much.